Dr. Naomi, over to you. Is saying we cannot hear any. Can you hear anything? Can I see yeah, some waves? Know. We can hear you. All right. Okay. Yes, we Welcome can hear. everyone. Loud and clear. All right. Welcome everyone to yet another session where we have leadership from the motherland come to speak us out here in the diaspora. Um, our guest of honor tonight is um. Honorable Sam Kawale, he's come with his team and he'll introduce his team to us as we go along. But before we start, I would like to call upon um, Pastor Gladys Bini from the USA to start our session with a word of prayer. Let's pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we give you praise, we give you glory. Thank you, Almighty God, for this opportunity that we can come on this platform. Father, we pray for wisdom and guidance in the name of Jesus. I pray, O oh God, that may you guide us in everything that we do. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen and amen. 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 Thank you very much. Pastor. Just a few um, house rules as we go along. So we all know that we should keep our mic stand off unless we have been given an opportunity to speak. Um, there will be some time when we'll have a Q and a session. Um, please be mindful of the time. We've all been told that um, the president will be speaking to us later tonight. So we'd like to cover as much ground as we can um, before that starts. So without much further ado, I'd like to call upon one of our honorable guests this evening, Ambassador Dr. Wezi Moyo, who is the Malawi ambassador to you know, the Malawi High Commissioner. To Mozambique. You're welcome, Your Excellency. Good afternoon, uh, everyone. Yeah, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Honorable oh, Minister afternoon. and the Ministerial Team. Uh, today, uh, we are honored once more to have the Honorable Sam Kawale. Uh, the Minister of Agriculture and MP for North Northeast. Uh, members of the, of the uh, diaspora community will recall that this is not the first time we are having the Honorable Minister address us on um, hot topics back home. He has ever been here or when he was Minister of Lands. And today he comes to address us on one of the most important uh, topics uh, back home, agriculture, and the developments that are happening in the Ministry of Agriculture that are of interest to us. Honorable Minister, we thank you because you have always stood out in terms of interacting with the diaspora and sharing information on the opportunities that are back home. Uh, to help us Recording make informed in decisions as uh, to uh, prepare to make investments in Malawi. 
I think agriculture, you agree with me that it's it's of of great uh, concern or interest to most of us because basically most of us have grown up on the farms and it's one area that is going to be of, of great interest as an investment area because we know what, what agriculture entails as children of farmers, as farmers themselves, ourselves, so this is an area that I'm sure is going to generate a lot of interest, and I would not want to waste uh, a lot of time. I would like to write away, hand uh, over the the floor, invite the honourable minister uh, to address us. The honourable minister is accompanied by by a team uh, from the Minister of Agriculture and Agricom. After the addresses us, we'll have a question and answer session. So let's let's be attentive. Thank you, everyone, for coming. Uh, welcome, welcome, Honorable Minister. Uh, Thank you very much, you. Your Excellency. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. Uh, I would like to take this opportunity to thank uh, everyone who has joined us, uh, particularly to thank the diaspora leaders. Uh, who have um, uh, organized this event uh, so that we can talk about uh, the agriculture sector uh, in the country. I would like to agree with Ambassador uh, Moyo uh, in Mozambique uh, to say that agriculture is the engine that drives the economy, and most of us have grown up have the what? Uh, either being involved uh, in agriculture, uh, either farming. Okay, guys, let's go. No. Yeah, either uh, no. us involved in farming ourselves or uh, living with someone who uh, is involved in agriculture. But uh, generally, um, the president of Malawi, Dr. Lazarus Chapera, has made sure that we emphasize agriculture as a pillar to the transformation of this. Uh, that's why uh, we have uh, Malawi's Vision 2063, uh, MIP1, where agriculture is pillar number one. And the focus is agriculture commercialization, mechanization, and these are specifically uh, chosen uh, to help us to stimulate the economy. Now, in the Ministry of Agriculture, we take this very seriously. Uh, it is for that reason that we have embarked on a number of activities that uh, are earmarked to transform this, uh, uh, this country's economy and also to speed up the whole process. And I, I need to be very clear uh, to say that our goal is to commercialize agriculture. So agriculture commercialization is uh, important for us. That's why you are going to see most of our programs, we are migrating from smallholder farming to commercial farming. Now we have so many programs that we are doing uh, to achieve commercial uh, farming in the country. Uh, first of all, uh, actually commercial farming, but uh, generally agriculture is supposed also to help us uh, with um, uh, food production for us to consume as well as uh, for uh, market purposes. So that's why um, we, we're running some programs uh, to achieve these two uh, important things, uh, food for consumption, but as well as for commercial purposes. Now, firstly, uh, one of the programs that we are running at the Ministry of Agriculture to achieve food production for consumption as well as for export is the entry level point, which is the affordable input program that we give a lot of people uh, to, uh, to go into farming. But realizing that we cannot continue uh, running our agriculture sector with a subsistence or um, the, the mentality of a subsistence farmer uh, that's why we introduced a couple of other programs. And uh, the first exit point of AIP uh, is the farm input loans that we are providing to our smallholder farmers uh, through National Economic Empowerment Fund, NIF. After that, uh, uh, when people are migrating from AIP to NIF, we also have another category, which is the agriculture commercialization. Agriculture commercialization uh, is the one that um, uh, we're putting people in groups. We're going to talk a lot about it so that we can expedite the uh, commercialization drive in the country. 
And then we have the fourth category, uh, which is the mega farm, anchor farm uh, that we're also running. Now, AIP is more for the subsistence farming, uh, but then our goal is to make sure that we keep on pushing uh, our farmers in Malawi to the three other categories. The farm input loans that we are providing uh, through uh, National Economic Employment Fund, NIF. Uh, there's about 30 billion kwacha that has been allocated and the amount might be going up uh, as year comes. But that is just to help farmers to, instead of getting too bad with fertilizer, they can get a little bit more. But then for those who want to do it on a larger scale in cooperatives or or in a special arrangement that um, uh, we are going to explain today, uh, you, they will be able to get even more money uh, for them to be involved in our economic activities. And then after that, the mega farm uh, support unit, which is now looking after large scale uh, farmers, uh, which we're also going to spend a, a lot of time um, uh, discussing today. Now, let me focus on the two things that um, uh, we are going to discuss at length. Uh, firstly, some years back, uh, we started the program of um, agricultural commercialization with funding uh, from um, uh, funding from um, uh, the World Bank. Uh, from our development partners, and then after that, uh, we after successfully doing that one, we ended up rolling out the second phase. Uh, which uh, the president launched last year. The second phase, it's a lot of money, uh, which is uh, if we convert uh, right now, it's more than uh, it's now more uh, more than five hundred and fifty billion kwacha uh, that we are giving out to our farmers. And then last year as well, uh, the president uh, launched the mega farm support unit. The reason why this one was launched was to expedite uh, the identification of medium to large scale farmers then uh, provide the necessary funding uh, for uh, everyone who is interested uh, to go into uh, this farming. I requested two of my friends at the ministry to join me uh, to explain a little bit more about these two Almost. programs and uh, why we need uh, you to know about it and also understand if you can be interested to join uh, this uh, movement uh, that we have. Uh, first of all, uh, we have um, Dr. Teddy Nankuma. He's the program uh, manager of uh, agriculture commercialization in the Ministry of Agriculture. Uh, he's going to talk about AGCOM, uh, what it is all about, and then uh, give a little bit more information on uh, what role can you play as uh, our friends in the diaspora. And then after him, uh, we will have uh, uh, Alfred Munifumbo. Dr. Alfred Monefumbo, uh, he is the controller of agriculture, extension, and technical services in the Ministry of Agriculture, and he's the one who is, has taken lead uh, in the Mega Farm Support Unit. Uh, this moment, I would like to request uh, if uh, Dr. Teddy Nankuma uh, can come in and then explain a lot about agriculture commercialization. I thank you. Uh, can the admin uh, unmute Dr. Nankuma? His ID is not that visible. So maybe he can unmute himself. Unfortunately, okay. hello? Yes. Yeah, we can hear you now. Yeah, unfortunately, I can't put my photo because I'm in darkness. There is low uh, voltage here. Um, so once the power comes back, I'll be visible. So allow me just to speak. Um, yeah, so um, let, let me... I say. Yeah, go ahead, doctor. Yeah, so power is back. So maybe I can put my photo in. Yeah, so um, 
uh, about commercialization, a gradual commercialization, as the Honorable Minister stated, this program started uh, in 2018, 2017, 2018. It's just finished in 2023, but we're given no cost extension. The first program was 95 million US dollars. Uh, because of good performance now, we we are now into second phase of the STEM program. This one, as the Honorable Minister has said, it is about uh, 333 million US dollars, which is about 556 billion. <laughs> so this program mainly we want to commercialize and mechanize. So we provide matching grants to uh, eligible groups. We have in ACOM 2, we have three windows where we are supporting. The first window, we are dealing with uh, groups of small farmers. Yeah. These have to be in the group, minimum of 20 people. The larger the group, the better, because we provide per head is $2,500. So if you're, for argument's sake, you are 20 as we want, that's 50,000. Fifty thousand US dollars grant money. So the larger the group, the better. For example, For example in Chikwawa, we supported the group. We gave them close to six billion Malawi kwacha, which was uh, I think five point something. Okay. Sorry, uh, we've lost you. We can't hear you. Hello, yeah, doctor, can you unmute yourself? Hello. Yeah, we can hear you now. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I can hear you. Yeah, I wanted to report that uh, we, in Alcom 1, we had one group, which was the um, Kaningina group. Uh, I think it was um, a combination of uh, members from diaspora and uh, uh, some members in the northern region. So that was a good uh, good development, Honorable Minister, that people are already trying, um, are taking advantage to exploit the program. So these ones are in two dairy, uh, the procuring livestock um, dairy animals. They would they would, they they are tackling the whole value chain up to uh, of taking. So they start with production, but eventually they will become also of takers uh, of milk in the northern region, which is a, a pleasing story to uh, for us that people are taking advantage uh, of the program. Now that's window one. Window number two, we are supporting um, value addition. Value addition. So we are targeting so we are those targeting uh, groups that we worked with earlier, but now uh, we, we can demonstrate supply, enough supply for them to go into value addition. So again, these are groups. Right. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Go on. All right. So, so these, uh, the value addition window, I, I'm saying we are also still supporting groups, uh, targeting those that participate in ICOM 1 and can, can demonstrate volume of uh, in terms of supply for them to sustain uh, value addition. So we we'll assess them and uh, support them. But again, these are groups. Window number three is maybe what would excite a lot of people. Uh, in this window, oh, no. we, are, we are supporting off-takers. These are buyers. So the category of buyers includes the aggregators, those that go and mobilize uh, to supply to someone else but also processors, we are also looking at exporters, but also anchor farmers. So if you, for example, you have a farm, uh, you can participate as an off-taker. What you need to do is to mobilize farmers around you and, and you become a market for them. So you demonstrate to us that you're buying from farmers, but also for this category, we demand that people should be paying taxes. So they should you know, show us that uh, they've been paying taxes. So the difference between this window and the two windows, the other windows, the other windows, the per head allocation is small, but we rely on the uh, on the numbers. But for window number three, it means you can be alone or a few people. 
so what happens is that once you apply and you are successful, we send a team to do due diligence on your company. Uh, so we look at the number of people that you are hiring or employing, but we also look at your turnover. So depending on your turnover, we can categorize you as small, medium, and large. If you are small, you should be able to access more than uh, $1,500 in you know, grant money, but we require you to uh, meet us 20% cash, 10% in-kind contribution. So in-kind is like, uh, you'd say you, if for example, you're uh, in dairy, you say you provide, you buy feed for your livestock. Uh, so you provide the amount of, you know, the money that you spend on feed. Uh, you hire labor, so you can also provide uh, the value that you spend on labor. We will regard that as your in-kind contribution, but we require that you, contribute 10%, 20% cash. Uh, so we you show that in your account. Once we are convinced, then we put our 70% uh, for you to procure the capital assets. Incidentally, the marking grants, we only restrict to capital assets. So for, if you are medium scale, you can access up to uh, 300 US dollars, I mean US dollars, 300,000 US dollars. Again, this one, you pay 30% cash. There is no in-kind contribution in this one. Um, if you're large, if you categorize, you categorize you as large, then you can access up to 500,000 US dollars, but it's a 50-50 arrangement. So if you're accessing 500,000, then you also have to show us uh, your contribution, 500,000, which is a million dollar uh, project. So this is about AGCOM. So um as as honorable minister alluded to the impact is massive and, and we think that with the now the new money that we have 300 i mean 300 million is a lot of money 333 million is a lot of money so the impact should be much greater than the first one and that's why we are reaching out to members in the diaspora uh, to team up with the you know people here so so that you know uh we help to also build the middle class because um, we are not only targeting a uh, small order in the rural areas, but we also want to bring in a lot of guys that um, uh, can bring in um, technologies, can bring in new, uh, you know, uh, models of farming. Uh, we are mechanizing, as I said. So uh, on top of that, we also have another support, which is a um, partial credit guarantee. Because we realize that the matching grant only focuses on the uh, capital assets, but people would also want to have money for operations. Uh, so people can apply again for the partial credit guarantee, but this one is a loan. So you apply to the bank that you're working with. We have four banks that are involved, uh, NBS, uh, uh, Standard Bank, um, the other is FGH, and... Uh, uh, what we used to call um, my bags. So these four are already active. Uh, NB National Bank are, already, uh, are discussing with us to join also. So what happens is that when you apply, we give you a letter to show to the bank that you're working with us as a group uh, or, the, or as an individual that you're benefiting from outcome. Then they can allow you to get a loan. We guarantee 70% of default in case there is you know, disaster or you've been attacked by diseases or there is drought, uh, just five reasons why you, you, you are defaulting. Uh, so we should be able to come in and rescue. So the purpose of this is to you know, de-risk the, the farmers. Briefly, this is what we are doing in Alcom. Uh, I think I can expand more uh, through questions. Thank you very much, Honorable Minister and members. I can well, in thank, before thank you, you so much, Doctor. Yeah, thank you, Doctor. Now, um, I wanted to ask um, for a favor uh, that um, uh, if we can have both presentations done uh, so that um, the, the members maybe can ask questions to uh, both the presenters, because I'm afraid that uh, if we start asking questions for ADMIC, uh, for ADCOM, uh, it might yeah, eat into the time the for the Mega wow. Farm. So if we could have um, Dr. Mwenefumbo uh, do the presentation on Megafarm, uh, then when the Q&A time comes, uh, people can ask questions to both the presenters. I submit.
Thank you, Honorable Minister. My, uh, my name is Alfred Manifumbo, as the minister introduced me. I'm the controller of Agriculture Extension and Technical Services, uh, but the ministry has given me the responsibility of spearheading the Mega Farm Initiative. I hope uh, you can hear me clearly and loudly. Yes, we can hear you. Okay, so yeah. I'll yes, quickly we just go through um, what we are trying to do. I'll try to share um, part of my presentation and uh, hopefully uh, you will be able to see where we are, what we are trying to do. So, um, as we all know, we are pursuing vision, Malawi Vision 2063, and Minister of Agriculture has been uh, entrusted with pillar number one of the Vision 2063, which is agriculture productivity and commercialization. And uh, this is a very important pillar. Uh, because if we increase our productivity, agricultural productivity, uh, we should be able to naturally promote industrialization because our industry is heavily dependent on agro-industry. Um, so we, if we produce more, we should be able to uh, 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 have uh, a lot of activity in our industrialization drive which naturally will lead to a lot of jobs being created for our up and coming young people. And naturally that leads to urbanization as young people uh, will be going, uh, will be um, coming into urban centers where the industries are located. Now, uh, as you know, or some of you may not be aware, uh, I'm not going to put on the, you know, the uh, the PowerPoint for projection because my computer will not be able to do that. So I'll present it this way. So Vision 2063 has been phased into four uh, phases which we call Malawi Implementation Plan. And uh, we are now in the Malawi Implementation Plan or MIP 1, which is 2021 to 2030. We are now in 2024 and we have four more years to go. So as Minister of Agriculture, we have been asking ourselves, come 2030, what is it that we can write home about having achieved our pillar of having increased productivity uh, through commercialization? So we identified um, some of what we call key enablers. And um, so the strategy that, you know, the Minister of Agriculture and Malawi government, uh, even through the political government of uh, His Excellency President Jaquera, put in place is the strategy of mega farms, meaning um, promotion of big farms. Now, in the way we have for uh, um, 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 categorize the mega farms. What we really want to do as government, as ministry, is to give opportunity to as many Malawians as possible who own land. So we brought it down to um, as low as 20 hectares. So anyone with 20 hectares of land in Malawi, uh, whether you have leased it or you have proof that you it, it belongs to you, maybe it's family, or you're working towards leasing that, we have invited them and you and everybody to join and register as a mega farmer. So naturally in agriculture, we categorize you know, farmers into three. Smallholder farmers is anyone up to five hectares. Medium scale farmers is between five and 50 and large scale is 50 and above. But for the mega farm, we have picked part of those who belong to the medium scale farm uh, category, which is 20 hectares and above. So 
we have um, uh, looked at how do we enable these farmers. Now, I'll mention that we advertised last year and we got, as I'm talking now, we have near 2,000 Malawians um, uh, who have come forward and they have registered that they have land, uh, 20 hectares, 30, 40, 50, 100. Some have even 500. Families have 3,000 hectares. And, uh, you know, when we aggregated, you know, the land holding as of two months ago, uh, land belonging to Malawians, it's coming near uh, to near 120,000 hectares. This is land that is in the hands of Malawians. We can call them, you know, a mid class, you know, Malawians. Now, these are people, some of you maybe who are in diaspora are part of that group. Uh, Malawians who are, you know, retiring, are on the verge of retiring. Some are young people who are still working in government, in private sector. We have all kinds of Malawian businessmen uh, who have come forth. Now, having come forth, we are saying, okay, look now, what is it that we're wanting to achieve? So we're looking at the enablers. So the first one uh, is we're saying we want these Malawians to be You, you are muted, Dr. Monifumbo. Who muted me, yeah. So, um, uh, am I ready? Are you able to hear me now? Y yes, we can, sir. Okay, yeah. So, the anchor farm is where we want that Malawian with 20 hectares, with 30 hectares, whatever, to be able to anchor smallholder farmers around his farm. So, that farm uh you become a support to smallholder farmers around your farm by supporting them with you know training you can support them with seed so what you are going to grow in your farm you can also share with the farmers the same seed uh, you can grant give them fertilizer so those farmers who were on the AIP and now they have they, 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 they want to join commercialization you can support them with fertilizer uh, we can support them uh, with an uh, seed um, with any you know including irrigation or mechanization so if you have a tractor uh, for your farm you can also use the same tractor to go and farm uh, on the land of your anchored farmers. The idea is you become the primary market for your, uh, your know, smallholder farmers. So they are, you aggregate together with them and, and then sell. So they sell to you or you aggregate together. So one thing that you have done is you've created a market for the smallholder farmer. Now, as I said, our 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 goal is agriculture productivity and commercialization. So the commercialization part of that means that we want each and every one of these farmers who have come on board to commercialize. In other words, we want people to take, to take agriculture as business. So it's all about business. Take agriculture as business. So as we are not talking about, you know, weekend hobby or farming, we want agriculture to be taken seriously as business. So that means, you know, the farmer, the, 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 the mega farmer must develop a proper business plan, must employ, you know, you know, farm manager, qualified farm manager. Um, uh, who can manage the farm professionally and, 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 and in that way, we're also talking of creating employment, even for people uh, who can be employed at your farm. And I will be talking about how you, we, we want you to, uh, to be financed. So the other uh, enabler is the structured market. So in the first place, we're talking of you, the anchor farmer, as the primary market. Now you aggregate this together with your, you know, out grower farmers, and then you take what you have aggregated to the secondary market. That could be, you know, these organized markets, AdMark included, you know, NF, NFRA, it could be, you know, companies that are buying for export. And those 
big far i mean big markets you know who become sendere um, market uh, they will sell to tertiary markets that export markets or they will sell into uh, they will sell to you know agro processors and under that way you know our you know processing agro processing industry will be flourishing jobs will be created so market is very important now this is an opportunity also for those of you who are in diaspora where you can be a market. So wherever you are, if you have identified a commodity, agriculture commodity uh, that we are producing in Malawi and, and you can sell wherever you are, uh, you, you can be linked so that, you know, the people who are producing whatever we are producing here, uh, you can export. I mean, you, you can import since you are there. Uh, we can export to you. So you become a source of market for us uh, to reach the, 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 the international markets. Uh, so part, you can be part of the structured market that we're looking for. Now, we are also aware uh, in that case that we have we to have diversify. diversify. So, so that means we want to produce as many agricultural pro, pro, uh, um, uh, pro products, uh, both uh, uh, crops or livestock or even fisheries um, as much as possible. So let me just share with you the next one. Uh, so we're talking of maize. Maize is still, you know, a national food security produce uh, in Malawi. So we're encouraging our mega farmers to produce maize. We are uh, we want to, to, to produce more rice. I'll show you, you know, where we are. Uh, there's a huge market in the South and Africa uh, of market, and people are looking for a kilomero rice. And, and so rice is one of those uh, priority value chains that we want to promote uh, in a, 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 its production. Uh, wheat. wheat is a product that we have just started. We've just developed... Um, a variety that can grow anywhere in Malawi, and currently, as I'm talking, Pixas and our Department of Research are multiplying that seed by September 2024. We go. We want to go into uh, producing on 15,000 hectares. For information, we import currently 99% uh, of our wheat products. You know, all the bread, whatever we eat, which that comes from wheat is imported. And that consumes about 45 million US dollars of our forex. So we've got to import a wheat worth of 45 million US dollars every year. Now we want to stop that by encouraging our medium scale farmers, large scale farmers to go into that space, produce wheat uh, so we can, we can substitute. Uh, the importation of wheat. There is a huge market of soya in China, China, and you know most um, um, in, in in Japan and other parts of the world. But China has opened its doors, and we are one of the four countries in Africa that has uh, um, a certification to export uh, soya to China. So there is huge market there. If you can organize yourself as a market and and you know buy from Malawi export to China that space is open um groundnuts is huge market and uh, same with peas pigeon peas in India um sesame in Japan is looking for huge tonnage of sesame we're not able to produce so what I'm trying to portray is we have a whole range of opportunities that have been untapped uh, which we can produce for export. We still are talking about tobacco. It will take us, you know, a few years, you know, a uh, few more years before we can stop producing tobacco. Uh, so we're still encouraging those farmers who want to go into that um, space to do so. Cotton, a huge market in China, and our productivity is very low. Uh, actually, I'm speaking from Salima where I'm uh, I'm spending the week uh, weekend uh, looking at our own mega farm that is multiplying seed for cotton. Uh, macadamia, macadamia is a new baby on in town. Uh, huge potential. Maybe you may not know. We are number seven in the world uh, in terms of macadamia uh, production. Number three in the world in in Africa after South Africa and Kenya. 
So Malawi uh, uh, Macadamia uh, is rated one of the high quality. Uh, one reason is because it's produced by, you know, um, big commercial farmers. We are opening, you know, the macadamia production to these mega farmers uh, so that we can increase our productivity for export. Uh, there's a huge opportunity for us um, because our macadamia has been rated to be of very high quality. And, and so we want to take you know, advantage of that. I would have talked about the in livestock um, uh, industry, but you know, for now, let me stop there uh, on the, the value chains. So, so I was talking about diversification. So what I was trying to say is we have a whole range of things that we want Malawians to go into, both for domestic a market as well as uh, um, uh, international markets. Now, in order for us to do this, to increase our productivity, in order for us to do commercial agriculture, we need mechanization. Uh, you know, a 20 hectare piece of land, you cannot depend on labor. Uh, we need, you know, the farmer, the Malawian farmer, uh, to go into mechanization. So, one uh, opportunity that we can open to you is where the Malawians have set up uh, an, uh, an association of uh, um, Malawians, mechanization, agriculture mechanization association of Malawi. So this is you know an association that is inviting young people, you know people in diaspora. We have a couple of uh, Malawians in South Africa who have bought tractors and you know farm implements. So this is an association who, who which is working to lend out tractors, you know hire out tractors uh, to farmers. We are aware that you know not every farmer can afford to buy a brand new tractor. So there's an opportunity where they can simply hire. You need a tractor, you know, sometimes for the very basic, you know, farm operations, uh, maybe for the last, first three, four weeks, you don't have to buy a whole brand new tractor. You can hire. So that's an opportunity for you guys, you know, diaspora. Please, if you, instead of, you know, buying cars and sending cars home, you know, waiting for you when you come back, buy a couple of tractors and farm implements and join the association, and then you can make money uh through that way by hiring out tractors or agriculture implement combined harvesters you know groundnut tillers all kinds of equipment uh that we need today we are very low in malawi compared to our neighbors uh in terms of farm mechanization as you know of uh, two years ago we had less than 200 tractors in the whole country as compared to 2,500 tractors in Zambia. So that space, you know, we need investors and, and we can give you more information uh, on how you can join the association. Irrigation. We are also uh, very much aware that, you know, agriculture is a risky business. So if we're talking of agriculture as, as, as business, we need to de-risk that business because you cannot afford to plant, you know, even 20 hectares of maize, of wheat based on rain fed. Um, you know, like we are now going through the, you know, phenomenon of Arnino. Uh, we are very lucky in Malawi this year uh, that at least you have more than half of our country had adequate rains. In most of our neighboring countries, they have had a catastrophe. Uh, but you see, you know, with the climate change, uh, you know, uh, uh, with us, the phenomenon of El Nino, uh, we need every one of these mega farmers that we are bringing on board to have uh, as some form of irrigation. So we are promoting what we call supplementary irrigation. Supplementary irrigation is where every farmer would have a form of basic irrigation, you know, so that should there be a drought, they can, you know, draw water and irrigate for at least the week or two weeks when there is no rain but they can use the same facility for winter cropping. So that, again, is an opportunity for you guys in diaspora uh, to help, you know, uh, uh, de-risk our agriculture, invest in irrigation, 
uh, uh, facility. Now, irrigation has been made simple. Uh, we have all kinds of, you know, modern irrigation uh, systems, um, uh, sprinkler guns, sprinklers, etc. Now, the big question is financing. Uh, talk of mechanization, talk of irrigation, talk of all what we have talked about, we need money. And that has been the biggest problem. So uh, as Malawi government, what we have done is we have set aside this year 20 billion Malawi kwacha and put this money into, you know, Malawi Agriculture and Industrial Investment Corporation, which is a quasi, you know, um, 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 a state uh, organization um, in Parasteto. The reason, you know, we had to do that is because borrowing uh, from the banks, borrowing from the banks in Malawi is very expensive. We're talking of between 30 and and 35% interest rates. And, and so many Malawians cannot afford to borrow money. But, you know, even if you do that, there are a lot of restrictions because banks consider agriculture as risk, a uh, risky business. So it's not easy to tap into that space. So as Minister of Agriculture, as government, we created this fund. Uh, this year, they gave us 20 billion. Hopefully next week when parliament uh, arises, they would have approved another 30 billion. Now, this is the money which we are lending out through Mike to farmers at as a low as at as low interest rate as fifteen percent annual interest rate. So this is a facility that we've made available uh, to our you know um, Malawian farmers who want to do serious uh, farming as business. But apart from this fund, this is where Agicom also mentioned. Uh, that as an, an, an anchor farmer, as a mega farmer, you can also tap into the agricultural fund in order to finance your agriculture uh, uh, business, uh, as it were. In conclusion, what we are looking at really by, 20, um, by 2030 in the MIP-1 is to raise our productivity. Currently, we are at... We are at at almost 4 million metric tons. You know, we are not producing enough even to feed ourselves. So come 2030, we are thinking of 7 million metric tons as minimum. We are actually aiming at a million, um, at 10 million metric tons. We are at, at 3.7. Can we get to 10 million metric tons by 2030? Yes, it's possible. If we we do these things in the way we, we think we we have, I mean, the way we have planned them, we can achieve that, which I've mentioned to you, we are at zero. Uh, we want by 2030 to be able to produce, uh, you know, 500 metric tons of wheat and feed ourselves. Uh, rice, we are only doing 136. We want to get to double that. So you can see, you know, what I've lined up there. We have lined up there. We have developed a roadmap towards achieving, you know, increased productivity. And, 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 and therefore, you know, um, we want to invite you to join us. Let me also say in conclusion that you see now, there are many Malawians who have farmland. One way you can join us in Malawi from diaspora is, you know, if you know someone, we can give you the list of Malawians, you know, those, you know, can make that available. You can join us, you know, let's go into partnership. So if there is a Mr. Perry in Malawi who has got 50 hectares and, and they have the land, they don't have the money, and you may be in a position from the diaspora to access resources, why go? Why not go into a partnership with a Mr. Perry and do that business together? So you will contribute, you know, financing, uh, but this is not something that you know, we're not talking of a weekend hobby. We are talking of a real business where you employ people, you 
you have or you audit your farm uh you are able to to track from wherever you are so that as partners you are really going into farming as business even from diaspora no one will cheat you you know why i'm saying this is because in the past you know malawians have taken advantage of guys in diaspora where you know diasporians will send money and then they say oh you know i'm building a house i'm building a factory and there's nothing to to show for it no no we'll help you to make sure that that you know partnership if it's properly registered we'll be helping to monitor so that you know our our, our goal is to to make sure that we commercialize agriculture and therefore increase productivity and we're looking for everyone uh, who is able to do that to come on board thank you honorable minister uh for the opportunity thank you well, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Monefumbo and uh, Dr. Nankuma. Uh, I would uh, I'll hand over to the host to guide us uh, from here onwards uh, with Q&A. Thank you. Um, we are welcome now to ask the minister our questions. Like I said before, please be mindful of the time. Um, one question that I picked up myself was about Chikwawa. Um, Dr. Mwenefumbo was talking about Chikwawa earlier, no, Dr. Nankumwa, and we had muted you at that time, so we didn't hear anything about Chikwawa. Um, would you please start with that? And then we'll have Sabina, Chims, and are there only two hands raised at the moment? Sabina and Chims. Um, and we'll send you a question oh, from a the chat. There is a question. Hello. There is a question about about bank interests and tax implications. Where would we find that information about the bank interest that we should expect, and the taxes that we will be charged as people of the diaspora? So please, Sabina and Chims, and in that question, the third question. Thank you. So Dr. Nankuma first, with the information about Chikwawa that we're not able to hear. And then we'll have Sabina, then Chims. And then if the Honorable Minister can respond to the question about bank interests and tax implications. All right, it looks like uh, Dr. Nankuma is, oh yeah, he's Thank back you. ahead, yeah. Yeah, th thank you. I, I was just giving an example uh, in Ishkwawa because I was emphasizing that um, Windows 1 and 2, uh, they rely much on the numbers because we are giving 2,500 uh, US dollars per head. So if you're, for example, 100, you multiply the 2,500 US dollars times 100, that's the contribution that we can give us 70%. So I was giving the example of Ishkwawa uh, there is a mega farm that we've supported. It's 1,069 hectares, but the members were about 2,300 smallholder farmers. So we supported them to the tune of uh, close to six million US dollars. Um, as you see that uh, they, they, they were able to, you know, amass all this amount because they had the numbers. So that was the example I was giving that uh, Windows 1 and 2, we uh, rely much on numbers. Why Windows 3? Uh, because it's now um, individuals or a small group, we've just decided to, you know, put caps in terms of how much one can access uh, up to 1,500 US dollars, I mean, 150,000 US dollars for me, for small and 300,000 US dollars for medium and 500,000 US dollars for, uh, for large scale. So it was just an example. Hello? Hello? Please go ahead. We can hear you. Yeah. yeah. Uh, he, he just finished the, the question. Uh, I mean, answering the question, maybe we can go to the other people that um, uh, had their questions. Sabina? Oh. 
Okay, Chims, the next one. Chims N. Thank yeah, thank you. My name is Chimwe Mwenkoma. Um, thank you for this opportunity. I wanted to find out what support will we get if we enter into partnership with someone we've never met, someone we don't know each other. Um, while we are here and they are there, are you going to be supporting us to, you know, to with the functioning of the whole process? Number two, I wanted to find out how often would a tractor, if we were to hire a tractor, if we are in a partnership and we, we bought a tractor, how often would a tractor be hired in a year? I know you've talked about irrigation. So is it throughout the year? So would we be getting a remuneration every month or yearly? And what would um, the remuneration be per year hiring the tractor? Thank you. Uh, may I come in on that one, uh, Honorable Minister? I think uh, the first question, you can combine it with a request of for having a diaspora desk in the ministry, a kind of related. So maybe you can address the two together. Thanks. Yeah, great. Uh, thank you. If you can allow me to quickly answer these ones. Uh, first of all, look, um, Jimwe, Jimwe, uh, Jimwe Mankoma. Mm -hmm. um, well, it's very difficult for us to say we can protect you from people you don't know, because it might happen that the, those people we also don't know. So be on the safe side. Uh, make sure you partner with people you know and trust. We're talking about money. Uh, trust yeah. is very important. So make sure you, you, you do your due diligence to partner with people you know and trust before you go into any, uh, any venture. Mm -hmm. uh, when it comes to the issue of... Um, uh, tractors, um, uh, we, we, we have, um, uh, through the mega farm support unit, if you join the association, uh, there are rates that, um, the rates that, uh, uh, you get paid for hiring. So you get charged, um, you, you charge per hectare. Uh, so there's plowing, ridging, hollowing, and so on. So you charge per hectare. Then, uh, through the system that we put in place, um you get paid a job done uh you don't you don't you're not gonna wait until the end of the year but uh, your tractor gets paid for the work that is done uh so uh the the payment uh should happen almost immediately uh the question about having the diaspora desk that's a very interesting one i saw it in the comments and i uh, i did respond on that one but since it's been asked in the open forum yes i can say uh, we will discuss with the Mega Farm Support Unit uh, establishment of the diaspora desk so that we can uh, handle some of the issues related to you uh, in the diaspora. So thank you for that question. Uh, we will definitely uh, take it up and discuss. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable. Uh, there, there were a couple of questions uh, in the... Um, in the comment sections, would you mind if I uh, tackle some of them? Yes, please go ahead. Uh, this one, I would uh, like uh, Dr. Nankoma to come in. The question was, uh, what are the requirements for someone to qualify for the grants and what are the deadlines for applications? So Dr. Nankoma, if you can uh, answer that one. And then the other one was, um, do these programs apply to projects related to businesses such as portrait, adding value to beef products, uh, raising chickens? Uh, the answer is yes. Uh, Dr. Mwenefumbo uh, did a very good presentation. He showed all the value chains uh, that we are supporting, supporting both in the mega farm as well as in the agriculture commercialization. So it's up to you to choose which value chain are you interested in, and then you come in and then we support. Uh, remember, uh, our goal is to help you to help us with production, both the livestock as well as uh, cereals and legumes for local consumption as well as for export market. But uh, if Dr. Anankuma can come in on the application and also the deadline. Uh, th thank you, Honorable Minister. The application, first of all, we float call for concepts which people now have to respond to. We just floated one for window number one, which is, uh, this one is for the groups. Now, we don't, we don't need people to be 
uh, a, a cooperative. They can be just an association or a grouping. You start today, but we are, you sign with us that we will train you to become a cooperative because we want to push this idea through cooperative movement because cooperative is for business and unlike associations. Uh, so you can we can start a group today and, and, and slot you in your you know your application. Once it passes, then we have people that are on ground uh, throughout the country. They help with the proposal writing at our cost. So you don't need to pay anything for uh, those people to develop the proposal or the business plan for you. So once it passes, then we 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 want you to make a contribution, the ten percent contribution, before we can you know take a step to also make a contribution. Uh, this is for Windows One and Two, where you belong to a group. Uh, for the window number three, we have not yet advertised, but the process is the same. We first of all float a, a call for concept, then you have to respond to that. To ease and and for conform uh, for uniformity, we've uh, developed a template for the uh, for the for the concept which you use, but it's simple. It's simple. You can feel it yourself. Uh, but advice for smallholder farmers. They are also assisted by the frontline staff agriculture with the concept. Uh, so, but it is an easy concept that you know anyone can feel. Uh, so it should be easy. I think at the end of the maybe of this discussion, we should be able to share the template uh, for you to appreciate. Thank you, Honorable Minister. Yeah, thank you, Doctor. And uh, what we'll do is um. We would also uh, try to see if maybe uh, we can do the Zoom. Uh, we can put it on Zoom, the the meetings you are having in really long way and uh, in Zuzu, uh, where you are talking about uh, ICOM 2. Uh, you've already done in Blanta, but there's a little longer and in Zuzu 1. So we can work in the background uh, to see if we can have the recording and share with our friends in the diaspora. Uh, more, more answers might be given uh, in those sessions. Yeah, sure. Honorable Minister, I can tackle some of the questions that uh, yes, we please. are typed here. Yeah. So um, there's a question about the, uh, whether the uh, Minister of Agriculture will assist with the customs and duty. Yes. So there are the, the, the government has put a lot of concessions. So if you are bringing in anything to do with mechanization or irrigation, that is naturally duty-free. All you need is to write to the Minister of Agriculture and, and request an official letter uh, to MRA uh, requesting us, but with, with the details of what you are buying. And, and if possible, invoices and receipts. So we will write the um, um, uh, MRA uh, to exempt you. So we've done that with a lot of people already who are bringing in equipment in, into the country. Um, there was also the question of partnership. You know, any partnership, it needs to be legally binding. So don't enter into a partnership that has no legal basis. And, and so when you, you are wanting to go into a partnership, consult lawyers, consult uh, the legal uh, instruments to help you frame that partnership, uh, contract, whatever it is, so that it's binding. And, and also remember, when we are going into this any business, you know, business must be audited. And, and agriculture as a business, you know, must be uh, subjected to audit so that, you know, your partners can be taken to task to explain how they spent what and how. And, and so what actually we're trying to promote is the spirit of taking agriculture's business. And therefore, everything must be followed as far as the legal expectations are concerned. Otherwise, I think those are some of the questions the Honourable Minister has answered. I've, I've typed my email addresses, both government and Gmail, 
and uh, I will also make available a link that you can complete online. Um, and if you complete that link, um, I think the best is for you to request the link through my email address and uh, we will send you a link. You complete that link online and with, when you submit, you automatically, uh, but that is strictly for those who, who have learned and they want to join Megafarm. So we've made that easy for anyone who want to join Megafarm in, um, officially. Thank you, Honorable Minister. Uh, thank you. There was a question from Henry Nkoma before the host uh, comes in. Uh, Henry Nkoma said, what has the government done to help mega farmers with equipment such as planters, harvesters, EDC? Yes, um, there is that association Dr. Mwenefumbo talked about. But then us as mega farm support unit, we have our own equipment, uh, starting from um, tractors with plow, ridging and hollowing, all the way to harvesting, combined harvesters. So uh, we are also encouraging you not to overcapitalize yourself. Um, if you want to just borrow the tractors, just come, hire the tractors, and let us worry about the services and maintenance. Uh, so we have those equipment. There will be more equipment coming, uh, the tractors, planters, fertilizer applicators, all the way to the combined harvesters. So I wanted to respond to that to say, yes, we will help you. Just focus on um, the fertilizer, labor, and other things. Uh, uh, don't invest so much uh, in the tractors if you cannot. If you have the money to do that, please go ahead. But as a government, we will help you with equipment. Thank you, Honorable. Um, yeah. Uh, okay, I can come in with uh, maybe two questions, picking from the chat. Uh, I think two or three people asked us the status of the applications which were already submitted and they haven't got any response to. Uh, would you comment on that one? And uh, the other one, it's I think to the organizers regarding how the presentations as well as the recordings will be managed after this meeting because I think a number of people are interested to have access to the two. Yeah. Go ahead, Honorable Minister, especially with the first question. All right, uh, I missed I missed the first question. Uh, I got the second yeah, one. Yeah, so I think one? a number, a number of uh, I think there are two or three people asked that they had already submitted applications. It could be either I think either of the two to uh, I don't know whether it's to your ministry or no, yeah, uh, but they I haven't that. gotten yeah. any response. Yes. Okay, I remember that. Yes, uh, apologies for that. Um, if you did the submission and uh, you did not get feedback, uh, there was also another person who also said they had did the application in Salima. Even Salima ADD came and did the verification, but they oh, haven't sure. received any feedback. Yes, uh, please, if you are in that situation, make sure that you send an email to Dr. Monefumbo. He has put the email address in the chat section. Uh, let us know uh, about that process so that we can get back to you. But our apologies for that. Uh, it wasn't intentional. We will rectify that once you communicate uh, with us. And uh, the in, second question. In, a, uh, the, in, in addition, our, our Minister. Yeah, go ahead. In, in addition to your response, this is why we now have um, uh, developed an online application. Um, uh, but, you know, we are still receiving applications. We'll soon be, you know, going through verification, etc. cetera. Um, and so we now have an online application platform, which, which, which will, delay, will uh, expedite uh, the processes. Um, there are so many applications, but we'll attend to them because soon uh, we will be rolling out the new drive. Uh, in uh, um, applicants. Thank you, sir. Thank and, you. Uh, the second right. question was, um, we will work with the hosts uh, to make, uh, because this session is being recorded, so we will work with the hosts to uh, share the link uh, of the recording so that you can watch it later on. On top of that, the presentations that have been done by Dr. Wenefumbo and we also have another one by Dr. Nankuma, 
will also be shared with our hosts who we will share with you in the diaspora so that you can read on your own. Then get back to us through emails that have been shared for us to provide further information. Our role as a Minister of Agriculture is to respond to your questions to help you make the right decisions to invest in the agriculture sector for the uh, uh, making sure that uh, the agriculture sector is really thriving. So please communicate with us and we'll provide the information even after we finish uh, the session. Minister uh, Kawari, can you just respond to one thing before you go? Uh, mm -hmm. One of the speakers spoke very well about exportation, right? <laughs> the market here exporting. Through past experience, has it that Malawi had was um, not allowed to export in some areas due to due to the uh, economy of the country, right? Mm. Certain food does not come out of that country. Can you comment where we stand? Macadamia is really good, uh, a good product from Malawi, which is really really uh, in demand. Also, can you comment on transportation, which is a challenge in Malawi? If you're trying to bring uh, products from Malawi to the UK, where I am, right? You either need direct flights or you need uh, sea shipping. Can you comment on what strategies and remedies have been there from the previous uh, times before the current government is in? And lastly, um, it would be nice to know if we can anchor uh, communities at home, what financial support would we have? I got the AGICOM one. I'm familiar with AGICOM one because I did attempt to uh, apply. It wasn't for, for AGICOM one, but it was uh, something that they anchored people at home didn't put in place in good time. But what are we... If I'm anchoring people in an area, will I get support? It's okay to invest my money in uh, into that, but I may lose all the money and get nothing out of it. Sure. Sorry, the things I want clarification on flight, uh, um, uh, licenses, exporting licenses, and stuff. Please, Minister. Great. Uh, let me start with the the ban of um, export of some commodities. Yes, uh, as a country, uh, there are some products that we cannot just allow to be exported anyhow. For example, maize. Maize as a staple crop, uh, uh, just because there could be a market in Zambia or Tanzania or Mozambique, it doesn't mean that we can just export all the maize uh, to those countries just because we're going to have money. We also need, first of all, to feed our people before we think about exporting. Now that is why we want to liberalize the export of maize if we can produce enough as a country to feed ourselves. That's why you are coming in. We want more of you in the diaspora. Can you please help us to produce more so that we can export? We are failing to produce more because we don't have enough investment into the agriculture sector. But we do understand that you in the diaspora, you have the love for the country, you want us to in, uh, to produce more, to export more, to get the forex that we need. That's why we are talking to you to say that the problem that you have identified, that there are some products, for example, uh, sugar and maize, we can't export anyhow because we have a shortage of it. So help us to produce more so that we can export. The ban will only come once we have identified that we have enough for us to consume as a country. Secondly, in terms of transportation, that's why as a country, we're investing a lot in uh, the railway line. As we speak, the Nakara railway line is up and running all the way from Nakara to Liwonde. We're using that one. The Beira one, we've already started uh, connecting from Unsanje, is coming towards Blantyre. That one, it's already uh, underway. The reason is we want to reduce the transport costs on road so that we can use the train, uh, then the sea, uh, all the way to the UK where you are. On top of that, the Malawi government is working with uh, uh, an airline, which I won't disclose at the moment. I will have the Minister of Transport do that when time is right, uh, to, uh, to help us with cargo planes. So these cargo planes will be carrying produce from Malawi to other countries where uh, you are. So I can confidently tell you 
that we will have uh, more cargo planes in the country to get the products to the final destination. And thirdly, uh, in terms of uh, the help that we can provide uh, for you uh, to anchor the farmers, yes, we need you to anchor the smallholder farmers, but it's very important for you to have a very good team on the ground. Don't do it remotely, especially at the very beginning of an investment. You need to make sure that if you cannot be here physically, then you have people that you know and trust who can help you to provide that anchorage of the smallholder farmers for you to get the return on your investment. Uh, remember, agriculture is a sensitive and delicate uh, matter because there's a lot of money uh, that is uh, being uh, used. So make sure that you do it properly by working with people you know and you trust a lot. Thank you so much. Uh, you've covered uh, all areas well. And some of us, we are planning to, re to retire and go into these uh, agricultural uh, investment. Thank you. Oh, thank you. I I'm so happy to hear that. And uh, when you retire and you're in the country, please let us know uh, so that we can welcome you at the airport. <laughs> Very quickly, Minister, if I'm allowed to, sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Can I proceed? Okay. Uh, thank you for this uh, very important initiative. Very important. Uh, very good ideas to help our country. One question that I need to understand is uh, what has been put in place from the government side just to keep this away from, you know, political bureaucracies and all that, you know, doing all these investments, but then let on frustrated with the political issues and, you know, the bureaucracy within the government. What has been put in play? Yeah, that's a good question. I, I saw you, you had asked that, there was that question in the comments section. Yes, uh, first of all, um, the, pro the whole process is not politically motivated. Uh, that's why people apply and uh, we go through the vetting process. The vetting process is done uh, very well uh, you can, if you are, um, if you are not sure about it, uh, you can even physically visit our offices uh, to see for yourself how the vetting process is done. Now, to show you that it's not politically motivated, uh, for example, yesterday I was in Mangochi, where we gave out six point five billion kwacha, a single distribution of money at a single day, six point five billion kwacha and uh, we gave that money to over third uh, over 15 districts beneficiaries from over 15 districts um it just shows you that our concern is not just to promote a certain section of people but we are supposed to prosper together if everyone is prospering across the country then this country is going to develop so these, the selection criteria is not politically motivated. In fact, the motivation for giving funds uh, to the people, our motivation is a bankable program or a bankable project that will have a return on investment for the person getting the money, but also as a country. So that is why the people that we're giving the money to are the ones that have satisfied the minimum requirements and they have a very solid business plan that will have a return on investment. If you see other people uh, not being given money, it's, we don't just um, uh, put them aside, no, but we always help them. That's why in Ag Home, we have consultants who are helping people to come up with business plans, as well as the agriculture, uh, as well as the mega farm side. We also have consultants who are helping you to develop a bankable business plan so that there shouldn't be that political uh, motivation or biasness when accessing these facilities. Thank you very much. Oh, That's Honorable Minister. Honorable Minister, Minister let me... Yeah, yeah, let me start with, 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 with Dr. Dr. Nankuma. Yeah. Let's start with Dr. Nankuma first. Yeah. Yeah, I just wanted to but trace your point, Honorable Minister, that um, we are so transparent. I'll give you the process for ICOM. As I said, that uh, we advertise openly in the newspapers, but also uh, through the radios, including community. 
once we receive the concepts, then we review them, we evaluate them, uh, then give feedback. The feedback is meant uh, for those that have failed to, you know, just make corrections, to resubmit. Now, the once we develop the proposals or the business plans, we have said at the independent uh, evaluation committee, this is uh, this comprised members from the public sector, I mean, from, from the private sector. It's a team of 11 people, uh, seven are private, some are retired, some are uh, academics, some in proper private, two, uh, four of them are in uh, public sector. So this is an independent committee. They review uh, and give you know their views. Once they said, okay, this one has passed, this has failed, no one can change that decision. So it's not, there is no politicking in, in ICOM. That's why you find that our spread is across the country and we've been transparent about it. We have a map, you know, you all our uh, productive balances are geo-referenced so that you know where they are and people can go and see uh, where they are. So uh, it is a transparent, uh, competitive process uh, because money is enough. We, we we don't disqualify just because of, I mean, for the sake of it, we give comments for them to reapply. So uh, you can be assured that if you give us, you know, a bankable proposal, it should be able to, you know, to pass through. Thank you, Honorable Minister. Honorable Minister. Yes, Honorable Minister. Hi. Uh, I would like to just follow up to that question and because uh, I had that question, I've, I've had the hand just to ask that question because as as good as it sounds within this uh, current government, the problem tends to be, and I'm not a pessimist, but at the change of government, that's when the, the new government tends to come and like slash all these programs, very good programs I might add, that uh, were well intended for the people to access and uh, to use. Now, you find that you've invested and then, the, uh, God forbid, the new government comes in and they, they slash all these. How is that a guarantee, uh, going to be guaranteed in light of all this? That's my question, Honorable Minister. And thank you very much for this. Uh, it's very informative. And, uh, and maybe you. before yeah. the minister answers, yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I just wanted to to add to say what what mechanisms have your office put in place that at the end of the day it becomes a public policy, not just a program that is learned by the current government. And as someone has said already, God forbid, it changes, then changes everything. But if someone ventures into this. Uh, business is assured that the maximization of the work we do continue regardless of the current government, whatever government is coming, but it's a program that is benefiting throughout. Great. Uh, so um, that question was first asked by um, Mr. Mzandu, and, uh, and then uh, I didn't get the name of the second person. But uh, um, actually, uh, for me, uh, what I would say is uh, I'm not going to respond to it politically, but uh, let me respond to it very professionally. When these uh, programs were set up, they are not being done outside the institution. Agricultural commercialization transcends political um, office bearers. It also uh, transcends political administrations. So agricultural commercialization is a project that we are running in conjunction with development partners, the World Bank, Multi Donor Trust Fund, and uh, this is a five-year project. Starting from last year, we have the next five years, which is going to transcend um, election period. Uh, our We've lost the minister. Yeah. Role is to make sure that it is well institutional. I should not think that just because there's a change in administration, things are going to change. No, no, it's not like that. The same thing with the mega farm support unit. 
the mega farm support unit is within the Ministry of Agriculture. It is right there. It has been institutionalized. So it will not be taken out uh, just because there's been a change of administration and so on. God forbid uh, that happens. But as you rightly said, these programs are good. And if you go on the ground right now and see the transformation that these programs are, are, are having, you'll be amazed. I've gone across the country and I've mm -hmm. seen how people's lives are transforming. So it is our prayer uh, that um, uh, if anything changes, God forbid, these programs uh, should not change as well. In addition, but Honorable Minister, to your response, so uh, we want to assure you that you see Malawi Vision 2063 has got the institution of the uh, National Planning Commission uh, that is coordinating our 2063 vision. So we as Minister of Agriculture, we are answer answerable to uh, the Malawi um, uh, Planning Commission quarterly because the Malawi uh, Planning Commission is monitoring progress of every pillar, every one of the three pillars. Um, and, and so it's something that is outside, you know, the political institutions. It's part of the, you know, National Planning Commission uh, with that. Now, from the midst of agriculture, uh, what the, we have now done is we have put the Agriculture Commercialization Omega Farm uh, Support Unit as a standalone department or unit um, um, responsible for commercialization of agriculture. So it's in, it's um, it's one of the departments um, uh, um, of the Ministry of Agriculture. So whether government changes or not, that department is going to be in place. Uh, be assured this this is going to it's not something that's going to die uh, with the political change of government um, um, could we have Yakobe has had a hand up for quite a while Yakobe um, tell me please, please. Right. Be thank you very much Take second each yeah, thank you very much, Madam. Uh, Honorable Minister, I have a quick question specifically regarding the markets, foreign markets. One of the biggest challenges we have had has been could be uh, maybe we have produced quite a lot in the country and maybe some of it cannot be used in the country. And uh, even after accessing markets outside the country, uh, uh, the challenge has been to get the required paperwork, uh, the licenses and other documentation from the Minister of Trade it has been quite a quite quite a hassle. So I just want to understand what yeah. uh, possibilities have been put in place so that uh, to ease the process. Thank you, Honourable Minister. Great, thank you. Maybe we can take the other question and answer together. Yeah, Jeremy um, and Julie. Yes. <laughs> uh, thank you. Uh, firstly, let me commend. Um, the minister, Honorable uh, Sam, uh, the other presenters, Dr. Nankuma, uh, Dr. Menefumbo, and our coordinators. Uh, this is a very great uh, presentation. And all the questions I had, some of them have been answered. One of the areas I'll just comment, you will be Pankani Aujini at desk. I think that's very, very important. Uh, I think that will also uh, address a lot of questions, even for those who haven't attended. So one of the things, if you can add where you will have this presentation Q and A answers so that uh, when we visit, I don't know whether you put it by website, eh? Komaso, mm -hmm. let's take advantage of technology. Can we uh, on Instagram, you know, that's where we can also um, uh, find the, some of the answers. I know they cannot be addressed in, in this, but I wanna commend uh, you. Uh, I like that quotation, would you mean the, business cc hobby i think that's very important we should uh highlight that one bit would it means business and the uh, there's so many other areas and eh? one of them was the, what uh some of the uh, one uh, measures you have put in place for security so in a Google and Sanga, just because we see a cooperation as it was is better. So that's one of the uh, areas. Uh, to uh, just going back to 
the confidence ya imene mungapeleke kwa anthu amene alikunja ine ndaka uno over 20 years every year mabwe kunja mawe just like the other speaker ali ku UK na also looking at retiring kuma what are the confidence you can give what are the provisions uh, you can give kwa mtu oti alikunja because we're not trying to compare systems metu makalia ndi kuna wait kuma we we want to that seriousness because that's what we like you gen to come to seriousness age. so what confidence are you giving kwa and what are many who you want to invest uh in the past 10 years just to let you know uh something beautiful has been happening and to takaruma banga partnership the and the ground aga konku no kunja kuno kutheba kuno kuma still we go back with the basi mabizoti mwayambana mwina mwatengana kukoti, you know, so what role are you going to play in my partnership? I mean, uh, I mean, as it is, because we need the gen that help. Uh, Singapore is Malawi every year. Kuma mwina paraina, mwina ka five years as Singapore. Kuma they won't have that confidence. But they have a partner, they won't be Somebody will be there to gen, to oversee gen, that partnership. Other than that, I, I want to commend you. I always believe, uh, one thing I can say, and quickly, I always believe with this is a generation in meaning a sentence into Yamalawi. It Indiana Zaga 20, uh, uh, 25. Don't expect to go to Angasin. I'm meeting a city in Tamiti Panopa. And I mean, we are 40 above. So I take this as a very serious thing. It won't be. Yeah. And uh, that will be the last question for you. No, 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 no. Wait. I think there is, no, no, no. There is, there is one more. I have had a hand. Hey, um, uh, so can, may I have your attention, please? So maybe. Yes. I think, I think, I think may I have your attention, please? <laughs> no, no, I think yeah, maybe, uh, maybe, Honorable Minister, you can guide us as to how many additional minutes you can be available yes. to take the questions. Now, I think, no, I think, I think now, brush, now, this is now we gave three people. The so I think he, there's one more. To... <laughs> but also, um, okay, let me have at your attention, please. I think if we can all be considerate when we are asking the questions, that would be helpful. Mm -hmm. Because we yeah, have yes. to if anybody yeah, can only true. take 30 seconds, yeah. you ask mm -hmm. your question, be factual, uh, so that yeah. the mm -hmm. others as well can ask their questions. Yeah. Yes, yes please. Please. Okay. Okay. I'm thinking I'm, the I'm questions we have to do. But we can do 30, 30 second second. questions for the next uh, five minutes. Then we answer all of them at once. Yeah, I, I'm, think oh, I'm, I'm okay with that. All right. I think uh, I'm, I'm sure. next. I'm okay. Next. All right. Okay. So let me <laughs> be. Uh, <laughs> the next one. Is, the next one is Chip Neri. Order, please. Order, please. We are taking that five minutes if we are not orderly. So please. Uh, okay. Let's give each a chance. So okay, I'll okay. start mentioning the names. The first one is Chip Inley Investments. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Honorable Minister, for the opportunity. But my question is directly to Mr. Menefumbo. Uh, Mr. Minifumbo, I'm one of the maker farmers, and I think one of the major concerns that um, I'm having is um, that of extension workers, because I, we do um, animal farming in Deza and we do hop farming in Kasungu, but we find that we have greater support in Takataka than in Kasungu. In Kasungu, we try to look for extension workers, but we can't find, those we are finding are very, very um, expensive. So I don't know if you could help me with this. And also on that WhatsApp group that we have for mega farmers, I've tried to ask so that they can add me to the Kasungu WhatsApp group, but uh, so far nothing has happened. The second one is for off takers. Oh, no, please. It's 30 seconds. We move on to the next one. No. Mm -hmm. no. Yes. Uh, uh, Stella, please go ahead. Thank you so much. Uh, after Hastings is Benson. What's going on? Oh. Stella, go ahead, please. And Mr. My Rand as well. My question or more of a concern is that there are some, some of us who are abroad and we try to invest. I personally invest in coffee. 
but when it gets to the point whereby it's time to produce and do the, the whole process, the government then comes in to take to take charge or to take control of it. In that way, I find it would even invest, but then when the government comes and comes in to throw you out, which I take it as when you see that someone is growing in a certain business, in that situation, how can you, as a ministry and as as the agriculture ministry, how do you, how sure are we that if we invest in a project, you'll be able to support us through it without infringing in our project? Thank you. Thank you, Benson. Thirty seconds, please. Thank you. Reminder uh, to follow, please. On foreign direct investment, as we're doing the uh, the mega farms, we would also want to attract uh, uh, bigger investors from outside Malawi. Now, myself, we uh, we get inquiries, people wanting to know whether there is an arrangement for the uh, public private uh, partnership in terms of agriculture, and whether the uh, the government would be able maybe to identify a piece of land where those people can come and invest. Secondly, is on quality. As much as we would want to uh, produce, how sure or what mechanisms are going to be put in place to make sure that our produce has, is a better quality, that it can compete outside? Because we've seen some people being sent back, their produce being now sold to the, to the local markets because their quality is poor, but they've spent already in transportation of those products into a foreign country. Thank you very much. Winnie, your next 30 seconds, please. Let's stick to time so that the others can also ask their questions. Oh, thank you so much. I can see that now Malawians, we are becoming so serious in this area. We, we, we are becoming serious to develop our country, for sure. But now I'm so concerned. My concerns are about now environmental management. We are become we are we'll be buying a lot of tractors. We will we'll be using water. We will be using the soil, the soil that we have been using for quite a lot of uh, a lot of a lot of years. Are we? Are we? Uh, how how sure are we of 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 the sustainability? Uh, of this project with the limitations of the uh, of our environment. Thank you. Tokozani, you're next, please. After Tokozani, she'll come in. Okay, uh, Tassizia's next. Tokozani is silent. Okay, Um. thank you very much, Honorable, for your time and all the facilitators. I'm also a mega farm uh, <laughs> with 400 hectares. I'm doing 100, 100 only at the moment because it was a virgin land. My question is, would it be possible to set up like a task force to look at this strategy, building the cluster on agriculture? Why am I saying this? At the time when we were supposed to be plowing, there was no fuel in the country. And there are so many other issues that come in. And then if we pitch patchy, you know, we will not take off easily and it will be very expensive if we compare our exports. Just to say a few words, but that's my concern. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and Can lastly, I get my time back? Ambassador Dangwira, please. Um, thank you, um, Honorable Minister. And uh, um, this is a kind of work that brings us joy. Thank you for your efforts. I want thank to make you. a request. Um, you said that you see a lot of good things happening on the ground. And this is true not only in agriculture, it's also true in other sectors. Since we are in the diaspora, would it be, it should be necessary for you to pictorize the things that you are seeing. They should come out in the media, in proper uh, media, so that we can appreciate them. I'm saying this because I've seen that not only in agriculture, but in other sectors, the government seems not to be able to, 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 to project strongly what what the good things that are happening sure. thank you minister thank you appreciate it. all right should i take those sets of questions yes, please uh yeah i think okay. that's the, that's the last state considering that uh we don't have time but we also have to listen to the h's speech thanks
Great. Uh, I will start with uh, Mr. Peter Yakobe, uh, who lamented that um, it takes a long time to get licenses for exports and everything else. Yes, I would like to agree with you, uh, Mr. Yakobe. We did have a discussion, a lengthy discussion with the Minister of Trade, and uh, they are digitizing the licensing process uh, for your information. And uh, instead of also getting licenses in so many other places, they were trying to streamline everything so that it can be done at a much faster pace. We do have similar cases uh, in our office. People actually lamented about that. But I am uh, telling you that the Minister of uh, Finance, uh, uh, Minister of Trade, I mean, uh, who I would strongly recommend that uh, you also have an interface with him to discuss uh, these issues uh, with the diaspora. Yeah. He'll give you more details. But yes, as a Minister of Agriculture, yeah. we have we discussed have. to make sure that these bottlenecks are no longer there. Uh, we had a question from Jeremy. Uh, Jeremy talked about the security uh, from, um, uh, from produce. Yeah, that's very true. Uh, we've noticed there's theft uh, in the macadamia plants. Uh, we've also seen theft in um, uh, sugarcane industry. Uh, we've handled those, uh, we've received those uh, complaints. And there's also theft even in the maize fields in mega farms. Uh, it is a very worrisome situation. Uh, as, a, as a ministry of agriculture, we are discussing with our stakeholders on how to beef up security, including the Ministry of Homeland Security. We are aware of that. And then, um, because this also uh, builds confidence in the diaspora, so uh, the Minister of Homeland uh, is aware. Uh, we've engaged them to make sure we address this uh, the theft issue. Uh, thirdly, uh, the uh, there's an issue of extension services. Uh, the Minister of Agriculture, we have uh, the ADDs across the country. Uh, when you have registered as a cooperative, either Agcom or um, Mega Farm Support Unit, it means our ADD, uh, you can contact them uh, at that ADD level to provide extension services. Yes, we know that we do not have enough extension service workers as a country. We've been lamenting uh, a lot about that. Uh, we hope that we can recruit uh, a little bit more uh, extension service workers because the number of farmers in the country is increasing. So we are addressing the ex extension service uh, question. Uh, Ms. Stella um, uh, also lamented that sometimes they do investment and government comes up. Uh, the way I understood it is uh, government comes in, uh, takes over and so on. I, I would like us to talk about that afterwards. Um, I need to understand the context of your issue. Uh, so if you can contact us after uh, this Zoom meeting, because yours is a very partic uh, particular and peculiar uh, scenario. So I would want to address that one privately, and then uh, we help you. Uh, Benson uh, wanted to talk to know about uh, any PPP arrangements. Yes, we do have PPP arrangements uh, in place. In fact, uh, through the Green Belt uh, Authority, we are already doing the PPP arrangements. For example, we've gone into a partnership with uh, Mr. Jimmy Correa and Pata, where we're developing over a thousand hectares. And then we're also going to partnerships with um, a Bry um, company, also going into uh, investments. So we, the PPP is already happening and we'll continue to do that. And as uh, in case of um, um, uh, the foreign direct investment, yes, we are encouraging people to do that. For example, uh, uh, Gala Farm, uh, the one that I visited a few days ago, and even uh, the farm we went with the president uh, in the uh, in the northern region, uh, it is already happening. All what we need to make sure is we register with the Malawi Investment uh, uh, Trade uh, Council (MITC) to make sure that um, those are foreign investors are well protected. Uh, we are doing something about it. Quality of exports that is we emphasize a lot. Uh, when we're doing the exports, we are exporting things that meet the quality uh, of uh, the final destination. That's why, uh, for example, Paramount Holdings, uh, they're exporting um, soybeans to China. They've made the requirements. Uh, so we are encouraging you to make sure that you adhere to the quality controls. Uh, Winnie, uh, Miss, uh, Miss Winnie, uh, was talking about uh, the... Sorry, no, Mr. Mr. 
uh, the environment protection, we are practicing what we call climate smart agriculture right now. So making sure that you uh, you put nutrients into the soil, uh, soil health is very important, liming, using organic fertilizer, making sure that water doesn't run off, do all the climate smart agriculture practices as you are going into mega farms. Uh, we have the literature and the technical expertise to help you address the climate change and environmental protection. Uh, Mr. Tassisius, um, yeah. Yeah, this is very important. If we are going to be uh, productive, we need to make sure that essential commodities are available. Fuel, fertilizer, energy. We need to make sure that these things, uh, we put emphasis on them so that the agriculture sector is thriving. We don't want you to invest and then find out that there's no fuel, there's no fertilizer, and electricity is not there for value addition. So you see that um, we're making some great strides. That's why... The mega farm support unit on its own is arranging availability of fertilizer so that you don't uh, run out uh, when you need it. And then uh, Ambassador Nguira, I, I appreciate that. Uh, you might have noticed that the Minister of Agriculture, we are in the newspaper, in radios and in TV almost every day, publicizing what we are doing. And yes, I will take this to our colleagues to make sure we publicize heavily what the government is doing uh, to serve uh, its citizens. Thank you. Thanks, Honorable. Um, we will now move on to Mr. Kawai, who is coming from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Addresses. Thank you. Thank you very much. I, I hope that you can hear me. Yes. Yes, we can. Okay, good. Uh, I, uh, Honorable Minister, Honorable Sam Kawali, uh, Minister of Agriculture, uh, Your Excellencies, Malawi High Commissioners and Ambassadors here present, all protocols observed. I just, I just wanted to uh, remind Malawians in the diaspora that um, the Malawi government is currently implementing a consultancy entitled a feasibility study on a diaspora investment vehicle in Malawi. Uh, this consultancy is being done by Professor Winford Masanjala, who has already uh, conducted a lot of uh, interviews with Malawians in the diaspora, as well as stakeholders back here at home. And he has come up with the, his initial uh, report on the context of uh, this particular investment vehicle. So just for the information of our diaspora, issues of housing, farming are also included in this particular uh, report. And Mr. Uh, Professor Masanjala is going to actually be making a presentation of this particular report uh, this coming week on the 27th of uh, March on Wednesday. And I would like to be inviting Malawians in the diaspora who are able to, to join this particular uh, presentation uh, in order to be part and parcel of this uh, important process. We have realized that uh, having issued those questionnaires, I think most Malawians in the diaspora have been complaining that every time government is coming with new initiatives, to involve them uh, in order to come up with a study or something like that. But that's the last time they will ever hear about anything about that particular study. So we are making a difference. We're going to address this particular issue by ensuring that uh, you, you members in, of the Malawian diaspora can be able to input in this particular process. We'll try and involve you each and every step of the way in developing this particular uh, process. So um, we do have a... Malawi Diaspora Engagement Facebook page, which we will put details of this particular thing so that you can be able to uh, follow and uh, log in and follow. Um, I will just take a minute to point out that for Malawians in the diaspora, uh, when it comes to issues of clearing and all that, dual citizenship. You can still retain your Malawi citizenship so, you, so that you are able to actually enjoy some of the you know, benefits that are still available here in Malawi. Then the other thing I would just want to indicate is the, there's the issue of partnerships. It's a very, very important issue. 
We have the PPP commission. I think that uh, in the near future, we can bring them on board on this similar uh, platform so that they can give you a, a talk about what it is and perhaps maybe address some of the issues that we brought up about partnerships. So I think uh, uh, as I'll be concluding, I, I just want to thank you all for finding time to be with us to, during this particular diaspora engagement activity. We are really very appreciative, uh, but uh, we want to encourage you to make sure that you register with our missions, which are all over the world, and then also to make sure that you are at least belonging to one or one kind or the other uh, association, uh, Malawi Diaspora Associations. I think there are so many of them out there. So please make sure you are part and parcel of that. And uh, yeah, I think fall, eh? this kind of uh, this kind of uh, uh, arrangement where you are in an association, it helps us. It's good for our engagement with you. So. We really want to plead with you that make sure you have a you are part and parcel of a, a diaspora association. Uh, finally, I just want to remind you that uh, we'll be having a few other uh, engagements uh, going forward. But make sure you visit our. I think I also link up with the, the organizers to make sure that some of the uh, documents that have been posted here they are also available on the Malawi Diaspora Engagement Facebook page. Uh, that was all I had for you. Thank you very much. Uh, thanks, sir. And uh, there's a quick question in the chat. Will there be an online session by Professor Masanjara? Sorry. Uh, there's a question in the chat regarding, I think, the survey which, um, uh, or the study which Professor Masanjara is doing. So somebody is asking if there will be an online session or presentation. Yes, yes, that's what I'm this is what I'm saying that this uh, we will share with you the details. It's, it will be on Teams. We'll beam it on Teams. If you have Teams, you can get it. But we'll also make sure that we'll send it through our missions. The, the details, we'll send them through our missions. Uh, we'll send the actual report, the interim report that you'll be presenting so that at least you should have an advanced copy so that you can read. And when he's presenting, you can follow and then you can interact with him. Thank you very much. OK, thank you. Uh, and in closing, I will invite now the leader of the organizing team for this session, our brother Charlo, please go ahead. Thank you. Uh, my job today is uh, to thank the Honorable Minister of Agriculture, Honorable Sam Kaware, for once again uh, making yourself available to the Malawian diaspora. Um, special mention to the members of your team, Dr. Ted Nankumwa, and Dr. Alfred Mwenefumbo. <clears throat> As we all know, agriculture is the backbone of uh, Malawi's economy, <clears throat> providing livelihoods for the majority of the population. As members of the Malawi diaspora, we have a unique opportunity to contribute to the development of the agriculture sector. <clears throat> One way we can do this is by investing in mega farms. As the ministers highlighted, mega farms have the potential to significantly increase agriculture productivity create employment opportunities and boost the country's economy. By investing in mega farms, we can help modernize the agriculture sector and more importantly, improve the food security in Malawi. Additionally, as members of the Malawi diaspora, we can form groups or associations to collaborate to in investments in the agriculture sector, pooling our resources and sharing knowledge and expertise. We can maximize our impact and contribute to the development of the agriculture sector in Malawi. In conclusion, the Malawi diaspora has a crucial role to play in investing in the agriculture sector. Uh, by investing in the mega farms, leveraging in the opportunities through the agicom, influencing our relatives back home to form cooperatives, we can contribute to the growth and development of our agriculture sector in Malawi. Once again, as I said, I wanted to thank the Honorable Minister, Honorable Sam Kawale, for once again making yourself available. This is the third time that you have made yourself available to the diaspora. We appreciate that. Um, I would also like to thank the Foreign Affairs, Ministry of Foreign Affairs, um, uh, Principal Secretary Bernard Sande, uh, Mr. John Kawaye, for working with us as we were organizing this. 
a special mention to members of the diplomatic team for the support that he provided to us. Uh, Dr. Uh, Thomas Bisika, Malawi High Commissioner to London, uh, Dr. Wezi Moyo for making yourself available to speak today, Malawi High Commissioner to Mozambique, but also to mention other um, uh, ambassadors that have been present today, Dr. Naomi Nguira, uh, Roy Kachali Banda, uh, Agnes Molande, um, and others that probably have missed. Uh, I would also like to thank all the people that joined in this. Um, the, re the response has been great, and we appreciate that the diaspora, you're making yourself available and showing interest to develop our country, Malawi. Uh, special thanks to my fellow organizers, and uh, we thank you all for the wonderful time. May God bless you all. Thank you very much for inviting us. Thank you. Thank you. And we are looking forward to um, a follow-up meeting with you. Just to say that we'll try and collect as many emails as we can from the chat and um, in, mail out our link, the YouTube link for this presentation. It is our um, custom to host these sessions to YouTube in a couple of days or so. So please search for um, Kawale and um, Mika Farms or diaspora in the next couple of days to be able to access this. To finish off, could we please have Pastor um, George Limbani to close for us with the word of prayer? Thank you very much. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you because of you are a good God. The Lord, you, you began with us. You started with us, oh God, when we are beginning this meeting this session. We don't take anything for granted, oh God, but we appreciate for the oneness, oh God. We are in different countries with time, different zones, but Lord, we are able to communicate with one another, oh God. Thank you, Lord, for our ministry, that Lord, you have given um, uh, this responsibility, oh God, Jehovah, and also the directors that were present here. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, that Lord, use them, Almighty Jehovah, and we just want to commit our country, Malawi, oh Lord Jehovah, that Almighty Jehovah, the, our country, we pray that it shall be a food basket for 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 Africa, oh God, and and many nations, oh God, beyond. We pray that the the same spirit, oh God, Jehovah, that has begun, Lord, it shall continue in the name of Jesus Christ. We come against any power, oh God, Jehovah, that one want to rise, oh God, against our nation. We come against even the spirit of wrath or any devastation, oh God, Jehovah. We pray, Jehovah, our nation, oh God, and we present even our president, oh God, into your hands and every leader, oh God, Jehovah, at the cabinet, oh God. We commit them unto your hands. And I pray, Jehovah, that the minister of agriculture, O oh God, Jehovah, you shall expand, O oh God, with any resources they may need, O oh Lord, Jehovah. And to reach, O oh God, to the rich, O oh God, Jehovah. To reach every common person, O oh God, even beyond, and those people that are in diaspora, that have got also got the heart to save, O oh God, through, O oh God, Jehovah, farming. We give you all the glory, honor, and praise in Jesus' name as we are finishing. The Lord be with us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. 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 Could uh, extra time, buddy? Extra time. Yeah. Uh, we, 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 we can have, we can have extra time if you want. Yeah. 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 Yeah.